talk about Dormavacha Palace, we think that we are talking a Western type of Ottoman palace. Uh, although it is, it is in European style uh, for its architecture. Architecturally, it is, uh, it is Western uh, style palace. But, uh, in fact, there are a lot of funny features in it. Now, I'm not going to talk about the style, which is an eclectic style of uh, mix, a mixture of European architecture styles. Uh, but I will talk about uh, the secret features uh, of, of this palace. Um, whenever I go to the top of Dolmabahce Palace, uh, I think of the uh, lifestyle in it. Um, you know, I'm an art historian. I should be interested in its architecture, decoration, and this and that. But I'm also interested in the lifestyle. So how they uh, this? Uh, Ottomans uh, moved to this western type of uh, palace and how they live in it. Uh, in my youth, uh, at Bostanje, where we used to go for, uh, for the summers, uh, there were two eunuchs. But I was about, you know, 10 uh, years old or so. Um, these two eunuchs, one was very tall uh, man and the other one is quite short and I, I found them very funny. Uh, and their, the way they spoke, the Turkish or the language and their voice was also very, very interesting for me. But after a while, you know, we heard that uh, they both died. And I still remember the wooden house they lived. You know, when I started uh, trying to become an art historian, I said to myself, um, what a shame that um, we, I did not go and talk with these people. I could, I could learn so much from them, but they were gone. And then, you know, thinking uh, in this way, I said, come on, there are still some people alive today who, uh, who lived in the palaces. So I should not miss them. And by the, uh, by the help of some uh, friends who had contacts with the royal family, uh, I tried to trace all these people and go with a uh, small uh, tape recorder and interview them. One of them was the daughter of uh, Abdul Hamid, Aisha Sultan. She used to live at... Um, uh, Jihangir. It was such a sad visit for me. Uh, I, now I look at uh, Betul. Uh, I'm sure you know you knew you knew her. And she was living with the help of some other people. Haji Bekir uh, owned that building. And uh, she always believed that she was going to pay them back when uh, she, uh, she, she would sell some lands and so on. He never could sell and he never could, but nobody waited to be paid back. Anyway, I visited her. She was so nice, gentle, and so sweet. Um, I tried to ask her questions, 
but she wanted to tell what she wanted to say. And you cannot really push them too much. They are, they are all elderly people, and, uh, and you know, they are so gentle, so naive. It, is, it was really a very hard work to, to interview them. Uh, she wanted to tell me how uh, they uh, they saw the buttons of the soldiers for soldiers during the war, and uh, how uh, you know all this sort of things. But I wanted to learn more about the life. I learned more about the life at the Doma Bacha Palace from a, a, a lady. Who, uh, an English teacher who taught uh, at the uh, uh, English stayed at the Dolma Bahce Palace more uh, more than six months or maybe nearly one year. Uh, she was a teacher and lived in there. She told me, you know, how the people were received, uh, how the visitors. Uh, guests were received and how they slept you know in one room and not alone always um, accompanied by uh, some people to do the serving and so on and I asked about you know the um, coffee offering for instance <coughs> because when the kitchens of the palace is so far I said you know when you needed to eat something. You know, you just need to, to eat something or drink something. You cannot send somebody to the kitchens and uh, have uh, some food brought to you. It's a long way. And they said we had some uh, offices, they called. Tiny little uh, uh, places where they kept, they had uh, uh, some cupboards. Um, and so on, and uh, water uh, containers, and coffee, uh, coffee uh, making places, and so on. And I said, oh, I have to see all this. Because, you know, when you go, uh, you are never shown these p uh, places. And, you know, little bits of things, after uh, getting all this sort of information, I looked at the uh, Dolma Bahce Palace uh, from <coughs> another angle. And uh, I have so much to tell, <laughs> but I have to concentrate on what I have to tell about Dolma Bahce Palace. Let's, let us go together with the slides. Uh, in some uh, ways, it is very close to um, the traditions uh, court traditions, palace traditions, uh, that uh, all the axes of several um, gates are on one axis. And here you see how many um, entrances on one axis. This is, you know, you don't uh, think that uh, th this palace has nothing to do uh, with the, with the architecture of Dolmabat, Topkapı Palace and so, but it has got a few things. Uh, and uh, to have all these entrances on one axis is one of them. Thank you. And the, the, the roof of the palace. As you know, uh, all the uh, imperial buildings, Ottoman imperial buildings, um, including the hum, uh, of course, hammams, um, kervansarays, or uh, baths, uh, or um, madrasas, or uh, mosques, and they are all covered, including the palaces, with lead. And uh, there is a saying. 
that uh, if somebody from the, a courtier uh, from an, uh, from one of the palaces is a little bit, you know, unusual type, they say, oh, she slept under under the lead cushion altın da uyumuş. That means a little bit peculiar. Uh, so, although this palace is uh, is in uh, Western style, uh, the cover, the roof is all traditional, traditionally built. Okay. I had a picture, you know, showing me on the roof. No. Uh, <laughs> on the roof. What a, I love to, to climb up to the roof. I, uh, I have many pictures of myself <laughs> because I photograph uh, certain things from the roof. It's, it's very good. This is, uh, this is a uh, hall uh, for the uh, ambassadors to, to be received. Uh, it is very European, as you can see. Okay, let's go. And there is a moide salonu. This is where all the um, ceremonies took place. And uh, during the bayram, the bayram ceremonies were done in here. That's why it is called moide. But in here, there are interesting uh, details. On, on both sides of this uh, hall, uh, here, you know, you cannot see maybe well, but there are balconies. It is like uh, uh, like many other reception halls that has got <coughs> balconies, where musicians uh, sit. For instance, at Dolma, a Topkapı Palace, at Hünkar Sofası, uh, at the reception, uh, in the harem, the biggest uh, hall uh, in the harem, uh, where uh, there were musician uh, uh, meetings with <coughs> musicians, with the music and so on. And in there, there is a, a balcony um, uh, for the musicians, and for instance, you go to Tadullah uh, Pasha Yanası, then uh, there is also a musicians balcony, and I can give you many other uh, examples. In here, uh, they are hidden uh, uh, in, uh, in this architecture, but uh, we have uh, we have it. There. Okay, let's go. So this is, you know, you cannot go up there, but it is uh, in here. So I climbed up everywhere. <laughs> okay, let's go. And there are secret passages. When you go to the Topkap uh, Palace at the Hünkar Sofası, um, looking uh, in to the direction of uh, Golden Horn, uh, on both sides uh, there are mirrors, mirror cupboards, covered with uh, mirrors. One of them opens up to Ahmed the Third room, Yemish Odası, fruit room, and the other one opens up to a staircase which leads you to the balcony. And in here, we have a, a passage uh, like uh, the top cover. This is, what is it? This is a cupboard. But uh, you, uh, notice the, uh, this uh, small uh, stool. You open up and it is a secret passage. It is the door of a secret passage. <coughs> okay, let's go. <coughs> so, this is the corridor. We have the um, uh, we have the balconies of the uh, Maide Salon, the reception room, and um, opposite to the uh, to the place where the throne is placed is a corridor, <laughs> and uh, uh, 
you see a latest uh, work in here, and uh, the uh, woman of Harem could could sit here and look down and uh, follow all the ceremonies there without being seen. Okay, let's go. So you you reach you walk a long way uh, to reach uh, the harem section because um, you know the big building after a certain place uh, we this harem starts but from outside you cannot uh, decide uh, where the harem starts you cannot see it uh, architecturally but in, uh, inside you know um, after reaching the end of the this very long um, corridor, you come to an iron gate. This gate is, uh, is securely uh, locked uh, uh, during the um, night time. Uh, it is it's always closed and opened only f uh, for necessary reasons. Uh, and for that reason, I it is it fits to the Turkish. Uh, way of life of that time. Okay, let's go. So when we we look from the roofs of the palace, uh, we see that you know this is all along the seashore. Uh, one wing goes uh, to uh, to the other direction. Um, this wing is also. Uh, a part of the harem, and in here is also a part of the harem. And uh, look at the uh, windows here. <coughs> and next to this, we have Shehzade Prince's uh, section, uh, a, a building which uh, housed uh, the uh, prince, princess. <coughs> that means they are, uh, you know, uh, grown men. Uh, they shouldn't be seeing the harem uh, section. Okay, let's go. And uh, ah, this is the, the harem garden. Harem has has got a separate garden, so this is uh, really very Turkish style. Okay, let's go. So. Look at the windows of this Şehzadeler uh, Köşkü. Uh, all the windows are uh, blind windows. The, in order not to disturb the style of the architecture, they constructed the, win uh, the, the, uh, the shapes, the forms of the windows, but they are all uh, blind because they face to the harem section of the palace. Okay. And now, when you drive uh, along the, uh, the road uh, next to the Dolmabahce Palace, you see the high walls. But in height, it is not uh, even. Uh, some parts are lower than the other. When coming from Kabatash, you know, you see the Jamd uh, Köşk, the, uh, what is it? Crystal uh, Kiosk. It's also very interesting because it is just like a Alay Köşk of, uh, of Topkapı Palace. Alay Köşk, is the is we can cons we can call it the window open which is which is open to the public to the city. Uh, you understand what I say. Alay uh, Köşkü is at Gülhane at the corner of uh, in the corner of Gülhane Park. Uh, so from there the sultans could sit and watch the parade of the uh, guilds. So this 
Cambu Köşk. This is the, the uh, this Köşk of Dolma Bahçe is also opens up to the street. So it is believed that from there Abdul ha Abdul Majid no Ab not Abdul Abdul Aziz was standing there and there was an unrest in there and they said how how the public is very re un uh, rest restless they, they were saying and uh, he was looking at the out, uh, looking out of the window and saw a simitji there and he said you say public public is that Baldrich Plakawa can say this poor, uh, poor man. Are, are, you know, are they uh, the public you are talking about? He said. But you know, in the end, it was really. Uh, you shouldn't look at these events like that. Anyway, what I am saying is that this is the window to the city. So from that point of view. Um, the Jamlı Köşk is is the Alay Köşk of Topkapı. Okay, and the the uh, the walls, the uh, the walls starting from Jamlı Köşk goes to a uh, you know at a certain level, then suddenly goes very high because the uh, because that part is behind the uh, harem garden. When you drive, uh, not walk along, because we never walk along that part of the city, I think, but we drive, uh, please look at, uh, look at the height of the uh, uh, walls. And these are so high, these walls are so high, that uh, I wonder if you you said to yourself how you know that height uh, the, uh, with the, with this height a wall can stand mm -hmm. it cannot and uh, for security reasons also uh, there is another inner uh, wall uh, and uh, how many meters between uh, maybe two meters. Maybe more, yeah, yeah. more. more. But uh, it is something uh, you know. Uh, I thought more than you would be interested in you know, look, seeing. Okay, let's go. So in such a room, in all the rooms, we have fireplaces. <coughs> of course, in the Topkapı Palace, we call these fireplaces ocak, and in here we call them cheminée. <coughs> That is because uh, they are west in Western style. Okay, let's go. Ah, here I already told all about this Jamlı uh, Köşk. Um, okay, let's go. Uh, in the garden, in the garden, uh, we have a kuşluk. This is for the birds, bird houses, and so on. Uh, because of uh, the uh, period. Uh, this is this was a, a big fashion, a Victorian uh, fashion, to have uh, such uh, bird cages and uh, to keep some uh, animals. In fact, to have to keep some animals in the in the gardens of uh, a palace was an old Turkish tradition as well. One of my uh, students is going to give a paper uh, at, um, in, uh, in Washington uh, at the Dumberton Ox uh, uh, Symposium on, uh, on animals in gardens, um, animals in Ottoman gardens. And uh, uh, she, you know, she, she could find a lot of um, images uh, miniature paintings showing uh, animals in uh, palace gardens. We know that, but this is this type is very Victorian type of the habit. Um, uh, it is totally different. Uh, but in the root, uh, you know, it is also 
a Turkish uh, habit. Okay, let's go. So, at the top couple, uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, masjids, that is uh, to say, a small uh, rooms or uh, mosques. Uh, and in this big uh, volume uh, palace, there is also a mosque inside, but uh, no minaret. One of the uh, halls turned into a masjid, and um, you see a mihrab. It is a tiled mihrab, <coughs> tiny little, and these are the um, uh, tomb cover, uh, you know, uh, hang uh, on this next to the uh, mihrab. And uh, these are um, candles, but together with candles, this, these are European type of lamps. You know, what a mixture you may find. And this is a pulpit, vase kürsüsü. Uh, but uh, in the style it is uh, different, but the meaning is also the same. And uh, we have also a calligraphic um, uh, framed uh, all this, you know, we find in the mosques. And the, uh, the, uh, the here, uh, the, what is it? Uh, on the floor, on the floor, there is carpet. And, you know, uh, there is nothing, uh, ah, also ratles here, uh, and here. Uh, to, for the crown stand to read, so it is. It is a private um, uh, mosque in the palace, but from outside, you never guess that you know uh, there uh, there is a mosque in, in it. Okay, let's go. Uh, another uh, image from the same. Let's go. So, uh, during the Ramadan, uh, after the uh, unfasting, uh, there is a long uh, prayer. And for, uh, for this uh, prayer, uh, they had too many people. So they needed uh, a bigger place for this. And one of the big holes, which opens uh, to both sides, I mean to the land side, uh, they, uh, it has got windows and also um, windows to the uh, looking out of the water, uh, Bosphorus. It's a huge, one of the biggest uh, uh, holes that during this Ramadan, they used to put these lattice uh, this um, separation, separation. Um, in the front, uh, mm -hmm. the man used to sit, but at the, uh, the back of this uh, screen, uh, all the harem women and also all the people who were invited mm -hmm. to the palace could uh, pray. So, uh, w you know, when I discovered that, I uh, I wanted to find the screens and I found and I insisted to have them put there and uh, to have them photographed like this. I don't think you have all, all no, the... No, no. Yeah. I know what it is, I think. <laughs> uh, where, is it? where are these screens at the moment? No, probably they use in certain places, it's you know. Right. Okay. Okay, anyway, you know, when you go, you cannot see this image. Okay, let's go. Here, ah, ah. Okay. You see, next to the um, mosque, uh, Masjid Odası, we have a, a room uh, to get prepared for the prayer. And in here, in these bottles, they used to have zemzem soup. Zemzem, mm -hmm. yeah. you, you understand. That is the water which uh, brought from the Zemzem uh, 
wealth from uh, Mecca. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah. <coughs> it's a holy water. So uh, you know, if somebody is dying, they uh, they put a little bit of holy uh, water in their mouth. Okay, let's go. Ah, now because they stopped si sitting on the floor, on the cushions. Um, they started sitting <coughs> on uh, armchairs or sofas and so on. But what, how they would use this traditional uh, um, ewer and bowl? So it should also raise too. It is very interesting that they found this uh, solution uh, because they, you know, elderly people especially, and then the people uh, would take uh, their ablution uh, sitting. Um, some, uh, a younger person would pour the water and so on. Um, so when uh, the elderly person is not sitting on the floor, then, you know, um, it should be raised so that uh, the dirty water can uh, go into here and so on. It's very, uh, I think this is quite amusing. Okay, let's go. Ah, the school. School room. School room. Uh, at this time, uh, uh, the, the education of the children of the court uh, was a mixture. <coughs> um, in the old days, in the older days, uh, the education was, uh, oh, it was also a mixture, but um, uh, the, the younger people uh, should, uh, should uh, uh, know Persian for uh, literature, and they should learn Arabic for religious, uh, I mean, <coughs> religious knowledge. And uh, Turkish is obvious. It was a mixture. Uh, all the intellectuals used to know all these three languages. But um, during the time when Dolmabahce Palace started being used, then uh, they started to learn some uh, European languages, uh, such as uh, French. French mostly French, also uh, some English as well, we know, we know that. <coughs> and then the school is, it also became a mixture. So we have tables like this, and also rahles for the crown. It is, it's a very interesting mixture, <coughs> as you can see. And here is, we, let's, See the next one. I can't remember. Ah, no. Let's go back. So um, here, there is a mushabbe. Mushabbe. It is. It's the latest work that probably some of the girls stayed behind it, and a male teacher taught something. So uh, that was uh, uh, for for that reason we had also this uh, in this school room. Okay, let's go. How many people? It changed. It changed. Kaç tane çocuk var? You know, it's a, according to the many. No, quite a few. Not a few, not so few, because generally uh, they had also the children of the courtiers. You know, the, they invited the daughter of uh, the grand vizier or the son. You know, so. Uh, Probably uh, more than uh, what they had. Not sometimes yes, sometimes no. No, there is a sofa. Yeah, go back. Okay, let's go. Yes, and chair. Chair. So it is a mixture. Yeah. What I say. And uh, let's go. And what is it? It's it is for the marriage. Uh, the bride should be behind, and uh, uh, as somebody 
who represents the groom uh, should be on the other side and ask if uh, she wanted to marry the man. So I found it, it is not the right place, but I don't know where the right place is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just photographed. Okay. And there is also probably the man, the, uh, the person who represented the groom, wanted to see the face of the woman because somebody else can also be behind. Can you imagine? The Dolma Bahçe Palace is, uh, has got beautiful uh, fireplaces, as you can see in here. Uh, they played, uh, you know, they really enriched the, the palace architecture with these uh, fireplaces. Okay, let's go. But in, uh, in, in details, you, we also find a lot of uh, Turkish uh, origin ideas, as we see in here. And this, uh, this uh, uh, sun, uh, yeah. um, the radiations of the uh, sun, uh, sunlight, um, is also, uh, was also very popular, it became very popular during the time of, of Mahmoud II. Mahmoud. And uh, this is combined with the Tugra of uh, Abdul Hamid. Okay, let's go. And looking at these mirrors, probably uh, it was made in uh, Pera or made in Europe and brought in here. Some of the, uh, uh, some of the um, furniture um, in the palace was ordered um, to Maple in London, to many European uh, furniture firms. Uh, we have got all the, uh, all the uh, documents about them. And uh, a former student of mine, archive, uh, archive, documents, uh, archive, archive documents, documents also yeah. we have. Uh, she worked on these uh, documents and she published uh, a book on this Sarai Mobiliala Palace uh, furniture. So you see, you know, they, even if it was made in uh, Paris or in London, you know, we, we find such uh, features, uh, you know, like uh, <coughs> this crescents. To make it uh, suitable, to the taste of Ottomans, they put these sort of forms into these furnitures. Okay, let's go. And uh, it is, of course, there are some baths in this uh, palace. <coughs> and uh, generally, the baths are on the first floor. It is not like uh, in uh, Cairo. You know, they, they can have baths in the second floor in the houses. But um, in, in the Ottoman tradition, they are always on first floor. This is in the, uh, in the second, uh, second floor. And it has got uh, such a uh, lattice work on the roof. Um, in the traditional way, uh, there are tiny little round we should have tiny little round uh, windows for the light. But in, because this is West in, you know, they wanted to create a Western type of uh, bath. But the idea is the same, to have the light from the, uh, from the top. And in fact, this bath has got windows looking out of the sea. And uh, from outside, it is uh, a little bit recessed, this <coughs> bath, so that from the outside, inside cannot be seen. And the light is a lot coming from these windows, but they still wanted to have uh, this top 
are you cold? Skylight windows. Okay. Okay, let's go. So this is more uh, inside. Uh, the, the next room is also uh, is also is uh, more traditional, and all be um, you know covered with beautiful marbles. Okay, let's go. But between the rooms, there are some windows. These are very, uh, very like very uh, top couple uh, ones. Uh, in the harem, there are some windows like this, which uh, from which you can look inside. This is to keep everything under control. And also to put some light, uh, which would give uh, the light uh, to both sides. Okay, let's go. So here, here is another view of the bath. Okay, let's go. Huh. The bath uh, doors are also covered with felt. Uh, even uh, the public baths, in the public baths, the walls, uh, the doors are all covered with felt to keep the warm, uh, warmth, uh, the heat inside. Okay, let's go. And uh, you know we have also uh, in other baths we have also very traditional. Uh, <coughs> Uh, sites. Okay, let's go. So you see the, uh, in the other parts we have very traditional uh, images. Okay, let's go. So it, when we go inside of the harem, we also find some rooms with, uh, you know, very traditional. Um, I found a lot of um, cushions uh, floor cushions uh, that can, uh, which tells us that in there people used to sit on the floor. Okay, let's go. So this is the bed. I think it was uh, up to last bed. Up to last Yeah. Um, uh, no, I think this is up to Hamid. Up to Hamid. Up to Hamid. Yeah. And they also started uh, sleeping uh, in this uh, western type of uh, beds. Okay, uh, but but they always have some cupboards, like uh, in Turkish uh, Turkish houses. It is uh, and because you know in this room he would never sleep alone. Mm. I mean in. He would have somebody to help, to uh, to give uh, service to him, and uh, the mattress and the other uh, bed uh, pieces would be put in here, like in Turkish rooms. So it is a combination of old and new. Okay, let's go. And this furniture, uh, this furniture is also quite interesting. It is neo-Gothic Neo in style, but um, in the, you know, it is a in the traditional, in, it, yes, uh, mm -hmm. it is a traditional sofa of the day. It is really becoming a mixture and it, it stayed on. You know, this furniture will become uh, a part of 19th century uh, Turkish furniture. Okay, let's go. So, you know, in the harem, I found all these uh, cushions uh, that prove us that they they sat on the floor. Okay, let's go <coughs> and some more. Let's go and these are the cupboards. Let's go. So, I think I should not abuse your. This is where uh, they prepare uh, coffee. Tea was not popular. Tea is very new in Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody thinks that it is mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's very old uh, Turkish tradition. No, coffee is an old tradition. And, and uh, during this time, tea was not drank. 
No, they, they didn't drink uh, tea. Okay, let's go. And, you know, I mentioned to you that, you know, they had cupboards to put uh, a few things uh, to eat and uh, to drink. This, are, uh, this is the cupboard I mentioned to you. And here we have um, a screen. screen. Yeah, it is open. You know, in my uh, youth, in my childhood, we had Teldova. And uh, because we didn't have uh, uh, refrigerators at all. So, you know, young people did not know. I remember, uh, you know, when we had General Electric uh, icebox came home. And it was, you know, I was how, how many years old, I don't remember, but I was maybe in my after my uh, elementary school. So I was t maybe 12 years old when I, I, we had first. So before then, <coughs> we always had this uh, type of habits. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, so these are the hidden, uh, <coughs> hidden features, Turkish features of uh, Dolmabahce Palace. They never uh, uh, left their old traditions, uh, although they uh, tried to adapt their lifestyle into Western one, but we still have our old tradition living. Thank you very much. For